Okay, welcome to session 17, part B. Okay, the last section in, in uh, this chapter talked about the prisoner's dilemma. I, I thought the uh, book's treatment of it was a little sparse. Now, part of, the, of this course is not to get into too many technical details of economics, and so I think that's why the authors didn't go into the technical details of what a prisoner's dilemma is. But I think this is something that every educated person should know. Anyone in this day and age who has... A college degree should know what a prisoner's dilemma is. You're not an educated person if you don't know what that what that is. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, some of you have heard of the notion of game theory. Um, so this is now we call it a branch of economics. When it was first started, it was probably more branch of mathematics. Some of you may have seen the movie A Beautiful Mind, uh, where the main character is a guy named John Nash, who was one of the uh, fathers of game theory. He's the one who came up with the notion called the, what we now call a Nash equilibrium. He just called it an equilibrium. Um, so um, you may have heard a little bit about game theory. This is the very first lesson of game theory. So I want everyone to have a little taste of what game theory is. And it just happens that probably the most important example of game theory is the prisoner's dilemma. So I want everyone to understand what, what that is. Okay. Here is the basic idea. Um, it, the way the prisoner's dilemma goes is there are two prisoners. Okay. Now I'm going to say it's you and me. I'm the, I'm the, we're the two prisoners. Okay. And what's happened is there's a prosecutor or a detective who's uh, interviewing the two of us separately. We both commit, committed the crime. And the, the, the question is, we can turn over state's evidence on the other guy. I can turn it over on you, and you can turn over state's evidence on me. Or we can stay quiet when we're having these two interrogations by the detective. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to assume is the way things work. If we both stay quiet and we don't give evidence on, on the other person, we each get a year in jail. Okay. So the way I'm going to write these payoffs, so that means uh, here's me. If we both stay quiet, I, I pick stay quiet, you pick stay quiet, my payoff is negative one when you're in jail. So is yours. You lose when you're in jail. Okay. On the other hand, and by the way, so I'm calling it um, stay quiet and squeal. Um, sometimes you'll see this, what they'll call this, instead of saying stay quiet, they'll call it cooperate. And when I say cooperate, I'm not cooperating with the detective or the prosecutor. I'm cooperating with the other prisoner. Okay. So we call that cooperate. Uh, sometimes we'll call it, instead of squeal, we'll call it defect. It means I'm defecting from my fellow prisoner. Uh, defect, let's see, uh, what else? We'll call it, uh, uh, I think those are the main things uh, that they use. Okay, then I'm going to call it stay quiet and squeal, or, or squeal. Um, those are the payoffs for the first case. Let's suppose, on the other hand, that I stay quiet, okay? No, excuse me. I squeal. So I give the state's evidence on you. Meanwhile, you stay quiet. Now, I'm going to assume that in this case, what happens is if I squeal, um, I get a payoff of zero. I, I get zero years in jail. Meanwhile, you get 10 years in jail. Your payoff is negative 10. The opposite happens if you sway, squeal, but I stay quiet. Okay, so if I stay quiet, you squeal, I get a payoff of negative 10. By the way, this corresponds to my payoff. You squeal, your payoff, this number here corresponds to your payoff. Okay, then finally, if both of us squeal, okay, both of us give state's evidence on the other one, let's assume that in this case, the payoffs are negative six. We both get six years in jail. Okay. Now, let's examine what happens in this situation. Okay. So I think, okay, I'm deciding whether to stay quiet or to squeal. Okay. What if I say, well, what if my fellow prisoner, you, have stayed quiet? 
what's my best what's my best choice okay so let's put up the piece of paper let's not even look at this part of the of the graph uh, of the table so I know you're gonna stay quiet so I know that if I stay quiet, I get negative one as my payoff. But if I squeal, I get zero. Okay. I'm better off squealing. Because zero years in jail is better than, than one year in jail. Okay. Okay. Now, suppose on the other hand, I assume you're gonna squeal. Okay. So the paper over the, this part uh, of the figure. And so I know you're gonna squeal. So if I say, if I stay quiet, I'm going to get 10 years in jail. But if I squeal, I get six years in jail. You're better off squealing because six years in jail is better than 10. Notice no matter what you do, you stay quiet or you squeal, I'm better off squealing. Okay. We'd say in game theory, you don't have to remember this, but we say we, I have a dominant strategy. No matter what you do, I have, I'm best off squealing. If we went through the analysis of you, by the way, everything is symmetric. So if we look at your incentives, you do the same thing. You would say, well, okay, if I am going to, uh, let's say I'm going to stay quiet, okay, um, you would say, well, you would say if you stay quiet, you get negative one. If you squeal, you get zero. Zero bears negative one. You're better off squealing. Same thing if you know I'm going to, uh, I'm going to squeal. Some of the things you're going to want to squeal, okay? We say that in this situation, um, the Nash equilibrium, the only equilibrium, so I'm just going to call it an, an equilibrium. And if you take a proper game theory course, you'd call it the Nash equilibrium. But the equilibrium... equals squeal, squeal. Sometimes you, or you might call it defect, defect. Okay. So that is one thing to know. Okay, first thing to know about the prisoner's dilemma that both players have a dominant strategy. They have one strategy is best no matter what the other player is doing. Okay, squeal in both cases. Second thing to know is there an, the equilibrium is squeal, squeal. Okay. Third thing to know is that the equilibrium, and don't need to know this word, but I'm going to give it anyway, is, call it in economics, Pareto dominated. What that means is there's another outcome that makes both of us better off. Okay? So this outcome, the equilibrium, is Pareto dominated, and it's Pareto dominated by stay quiet, stay quiet. Okay, we could just sign contracts with each other and make an agreement. Hey, look, I'm going to stay quiet, you stay quiet. Let's make this agreement. If we could just do that, we would be both better off with getting one year in jail than six. The problem is, even if we made that deal. How do you enforce it? Both of us want a defect. Okay, if I know you're staying quiet, I can get zero years in jail. Okay, but if somehow we could do something like sign a contract, have some outside body enforce this, we could reach an outcome that would make both of us better off. Okay, now in the book, the authors talk about a case where you have a choice of becoming a good citizen. So a good citizen may mean voting or it may mean uh, becoming informed about the issues. Okay. On the other hand, you could spend that time instead going bowling. Okay. This corresponds exactly to what I've set up, except we just changed the labels. Okay. So if I said stay quiet, let's call it instead be a good citizen. So client instead good. And then instead and then squealing, let's instead label it go bowling. And here's squealing. Go bowling. And I hope you'll trust me on this. If I just add, if I add the same number of 
units to each payoff. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, 15 to each of these payoffs. So if I had negative 1, set them on this make it 14. Negative 1 here is 14. 0 is 15. Negative 10 is 5. Negative 10 is 5. 0 is 15. And 6 is 9. 6 is 9. We have these new payoffs. It's a little bit easier to understand if you think of it in, in, with positive numbers in, you know, in this case. The key is the same exact thing is going to happen. Um, my sheet of paper. The same exact thing. If I know that you're going to be a good citizen, okay, uh, do I want to be a good citizen or go bowling? Well, it turns out I, I do better by going bowling. 15 is higher than 14. If you're going to go bowling, do I want to be a good citizen and get 5 or go bowling and get 9? Here again, I want to go bowling. Okay, No matter what you do, I'm better off going bowling. You're the same way. You say, no matter what I do, you're better off going bowling. The equilibrium is that we both go bowling, even though we could have both been better off if we had made this agreement between us to be a good citizen. Okay, This prisoner's dilemma describes a lot of problems, and we say that this is one with um, democracies. There's a, uh, We'd all be better off if we all vote or if we all become informed citizens, but we have an incentive to shirk okay, or defect um, from the group and do things like, like go bowling. Um, Okay, so that's, I wanted to give a little co extra context about what the book is talking I hope you'll reread that section, when because I, th I think without this, you wouldn't quite understand what the authors are talking about. And they also talk about, I said this applies to a lot of different situations in economics or politics, and uh, the book mentions one more would be two duopolists, so two producers, two sellers, they're the only two in a market, they each want, would like to keep prices high, okay, so they can get high profits, okay, the problem is each one has an incentive to make the price a little bit lower than the other person, okay, that gives, if I do that, that makes my profit really high, makes you have zero profit, in a sense, I'm shirking. You can set up a situation, I hope you'll trust me on this, where the situation looks just like a prisoner's dilemma. The two duopolists, even though each has an incentive to undercut the other one, the equilibrium is that they both set a low price, but then the equilibrium gives them very low profits. They both would have been better off if they could have tied their hands, made some sort of agreement to both keep their prices high. So that's an, another case where we say the prisoner's dilemma describes the, the situation those two duopolists face. Okay, so that is part B. Okay, I've now talked about all the, uh, the aspects uh, of the chapter. So now part C and D, by the way, I think in the past I said something about, think of these, if I do the chapters in the problem, that's... Uh, 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 that's voluntary, uh, yeah, not quite this time. I think this time I'm going to describe some things that really uh, I want you to be uh, required to know, maybe some extra, a, a new concept or two. So this one is, is not voluntary. I need, this is a requirement. So I want you to see parts C and D. Okay, so that was B. See you in part C.